to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, February 20th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, the U.S. and EU move to impose sanctions on Ukraine. And the Second Amendment sends three thugs running. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And I see guys walking like they're thugs down the street. And if they come up to me and try to put a hand on me, I'm going to punch them right in the throat. Well, our top story tonight is over 100 dead in the Ukraine as the U.S. and the EU move to enact sanctions. Now, these are coming from Senator John McCain and others, and it really rings hollow that they would put sanctions against them. They're crying crocodile tears, talking about the police brutality against demonstrators. Why don't they do something about it here at home whenever they see these things happening? You know, we had John Quincy Adams say that we don't go abroad seeking monsters to destroy. We've got a lot of monsters here when it comes to protecting free speech, when it comes to reining in excessive force by the police, by the military. But of course, they've openly said that they are fomenting this revolution, supporting it, confessing that they've given $5 billion to the leaders there. We feel very sorry for the people of the Ukraine. They have a long history of oppression. They've been caught now yet again in the struggle for power between two different rival gangs. Now, the Washington Post reports that just about a week after we reported that the Department of Homeland Security through ICE was looking for license plate reader database, proposal. Now they're saying they're withdrawing that. The Washington Post reports the Department of Homeland Security is canceling the national license plate tracking plan. They said this is just days after they were soliciting proposals from companies to compile a database of license plate information from commercial and law enforcement tag readers. Now, this is the sort of thing that we've seen and we're, we're concerned about at the border. Clearly, they're not worried about illegal immigrants coming across the border. And yet we see many politicians calling for massive fences, massive border control. And others like Ron Paul have pointed out, if they actually do that, they can also keep us in a country. And of course, they've shown no interest in keeping people out. But it's also a question of, do we really believe them? If we look at this other article that came out today, this is from Fast Company. And they're talking about how Cisco is now going into competition with IBM to make our highways actually information highways, really literal information highways, embedding the internet into the highway. And what they're pointing out is that they're gonna have sensors embedded in pavements, license plate reading systems. Hey, how about that? It's back, didn't go away. And social media feeds, and of course, the ubiquitous video cameras that are going to allow different agencies to share, to share video feeds. Now, the person who wrote the article comments on it and he says, some people may find that the AGT, that's a Swiss security firm, that the AGT and Cisco product is a bit creepy. After all, it is a traffic management system that reads license plate numbers and then integrates that into social media. Nevertheless, it's much a part of a much larger trend in which city, state, and federal agencies use sensors to monitor the smallest aspects of everyday urban life. Yeah, that's right. Don't worry, it's not creepy, it's just trendy. Get used to it. And then we had the Intel CEO go on to Reddit and answer questions and say, yeah, give me all of your questions, I will answer anything. Well, that is anything except questions about backdoors into their processors that the NSA can use. He pointedly was very silent about that, and the Twitterverse came back on him pretty strongly. These are some of the tweets that came back. It says, hi, Reddit, I'm CEO of Intel. Ask me anything except whether the NSA has backdoored our chips. Another one, CEO of Intel does a Reddit AMA. Top two questions are very pointed inquiries about the NSA, crickets. <laughs> and then this one, my favorite. Blink twice if you're not allowed to answer this question. That's right, he can talk about his relationship with Apple, he can talk about his favorite sandwich, whatever, but he won't talk about the NSA, but we've talked about that. We've shown you their own product videos where they talk about how easy it is to dial in through the back door into someone's computer for presumably for maintenance purposes, but of course, that would also work for the NSA's purposes as well. Now, there's new updated information from Fukushima about radiation leaks. This is a story from VOA News. New radioactive leak reported contained at Japan nuclear plant. Now, we're coming up on the third anniversary, and this is what TEPCO said today. The leak has been stopped, and it's unlikely that any of the water reached the sea, which is 700 meters away. It was about 100 
tons of contaminated water. And of course, we've learned in the past that this is a regular occurrence, actually. They've had 300 tons leaking regularly for quite some time, and they said, don't worry about it, it's just the ocean, and the ocean is very big, so the radiation really doesn't matter. And here's what they said, the leak was, occurred because two valves in the storage tank were mistakenly left open. And there are, of course, other malfunctions that they didn't mention. And we see this happening in the U.S. as well. Even though we haven't had such a large event as Fukushima Daiichi, we have a very, very old nuclear power plant in Washington State, the Hanford, the Hanford Nuclear Power Plant. And this is a story from Mikhail Thalen. He says, whistleblower is fired after warning of danger at the Hanford Nuclear Plant. This is Donna Bush, the site's environmental and nuclear safety manager, now the third high-level employee to be removed after exposing Hanford's growing dangers. And he points out in the story that this plant was built in the 1940s as part of the Manhattan Project. And this is something we're seeing over and over and over again. Nuclear power plants that came into commission that were supposed to operate for 20, 25 years, that was their design parameter, that was their licensing parameter, and then once they reached that point, they just arbitrarily expend it for another couple of decades, or 30 years, or 40 years, and that's what's happened over and over again at Hanford Nuclear Power Plant. And what they say is, she said that the URS gave me no reason for my termination other than, quote, unprofessional conduct, unquote. They gave me no explanation, no documentation, and he says that she joins others, such as the former head of research who was fired shortly after his concerns prompted a federal investigation last year. And just last year, he reports, workers discovered six leaking storage tanks. Ah, sounds like Fukushima, doesn't it? That were producing 1,600 times higher than normal radiation readings. And finally, for some good news, this is a story from the 10th Amendment Center. A bill to nullify a federal hemp ban in Tennessee has passed the subcommittee. This is a bill that would effectively nullify a federal ban on the growing of hemp. Now, of course, as the article points out, hemp has a lot of industrial competitors. And many people suspect that's why the DEA is banning it. It has no psycho effects to anyone. You can't get high off of hemp. It's, a, it's related to marijuana, but you can't smoke it and get high. They use it for things like rope. Remember the Hemp for Victory campaign that the U.S. Navy had a video about that fighting the Nazis in World War II? But it also is a, com a competitor to cotton, to paper, to lumber, to pharmaceuticals. That's right. It's a lot of things that it competes with. Many suspect that's why it's been banned. But more importantly, why is it that the DEA or the FDA, for example, can ban things just arbitrarily? It took two constitutional amendments out of the 20 sama that we have for alcohol prohibition because the federal government does not have the authority to ban substances. That's why we had a constitutional amendment to ban alcohol and why another one was required to take that off again. But now they've taken the position and they've enacted acts and laws to say that, the, uh, that everything is prohibited unless they expressly permit it. And that's the real danger here that everyone should be concerned about because it also affects people not just in terms of competition for things like cotton and wood, but it also affects people in terms of the FDA prohibiting medicine from terminally ill patients. Now stay tuned right after the break. We're going to have some very interesting updates on the Second Amendment and a special report from Jakari Jackson. So stay tuned. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com 
The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. The brainwashing media machine has been turned up on high and it's time for humanity to double down on the true people's media and strike back against the tyrants that are destroying our civilization with their lies and fraud. We are the resistance. You are the resistance. You are the info war. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Welcome back. Now, we've reported many times here at InfoWars about the efforts to try to suppress the open carry, the legal open carry of firearms. Now, we believe this is part of the campaign to propagandize the public. Just as Eric Holder has said in the past was his intention, they want people to be very afraid of guns wherever they see them, even if they see children drawing pictures of them in a school, but especially if they see someone with it slung over their shoulder and walking along. That is legal in the state of Texas, and yet they have banned it now around the state capitol because we've had open carry groups standing up for their civil rights. Now we're seeing the same thing in North Carolina. This is a story covered by gunconfiscation.com, and they're pointing out that this coming Saturday, there's going to be a Second Amendment rally that's going to be in Asheville, North Carolina. Now, in the past, the people who attended the rally would open carry, as they were legally allowed to do. But this time, they're saying that the police have a problem with that. And they're asking people to still wear a holster, but leave it empty. You know, kind of like Sheriff Woody. <laughs> that's, the, that's what they're asking people to do. Now, they come in and they say this, and well, I agree with this. The outrageous part of the story is that the attendees are apparently okay with this. While attending a Second Amendment support rally, would it make more of a statement to openly carry? And of course it would. It's absurd, but we're seeing this over and over again, and yet... Look at this story out of Detroit. Mother opens fire on home invaders in order to protect her family. Now, this is exactly what the Detroit police chief came out a couple of weeks ago and said. He had started out as a police officer in California, then he had gone to Maine, and then when he went to Maine, he realized that guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens makes the place safer, especially for the citizens. So he supports citizens owning guns, and he supports that in Detroit. And the police very quickly apprehended the three thugs who attacked this mother who was huddled inside the house with her children, protecting her children by using a firearm. They quickly apprehended them, but notice that they could not be there to protect them. That's exactly what the police chief of Detroit was saying, and that's exactly why we have the Second Amendment, to protect ourselves from criminals, whether they're individual criminals or whether they're criminals who get charge of the government. But there is an amazing amount of paranoia and fear that is being generated by the system. Look at what the NFL is doing. They're banning cops at the Super Bowl from carrying weapons. Here's Jakari Jackson's report. Police in Minnesota are suing the NFL for not being able to carry their weapons into stadiums while off duty. By prohibiting licensed police officers from maintaining possession of their service weapon, the National Football League not only violates the law, but places the public and law enforcement at unnecessary risk while impairing the legal status of police officers, the very people willing to put their lives on the line to protect the public every day, said a representative for the Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association. Add to that, the Minnesota Vikings will be playing at the University of Minnesota until the new Viking Stadium is built. And as one might.